Hey, welcome back to Stage Select, everybody. Joining with me today is my friend Will. Will, say what's going on? How you doing, guys? All good. We are uh, we are down one player this week. Uh, unfortunately, Manny's uh, having a little vacation, so it's, uh, this this episode is going to be just a couple of stages, I guess. Um, thanks to the audio listeners, if you guys aren't already following or subscribed on YouTube or Instagram, we're on most of the socials. Please check us out there. You'll find us at MCW Stage Select. That's going to be the handle. Um, so the DC Expo uh, just happened. Um, but, uh, in this episode, and then if you watch on to the next one, um, we're actually not going to be unpackaging too much of it because our resident DC super fan is, isn't here right now. So, you know, that just seems kind of unfair. Um, yeah. we'll, so. we'll back with him. Like he's, he's really excited. He's has a lot of news he want to share with all of you guys. So, uh, as soon as he comes back, we promise you guys we're going to deliver on those topics for sure. There's a good chance that by while you're watching this, or by the time that you're watching this, we're currently talking about it <laughs> next week in the future. Probably in the process of you listening to this, actually recording it with Manny. So yeah. uh, it'll be exciting, but we are going to touch on it. So um, I think uh, I think today we're going to talk about uh, the Suicide Squad. It is going to be the one um, the one piece from DC Expo that uh, is very juicy. We do want to unpackage it a little bit. Um, and then, um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and just yeah, mention, I'm gonna yeah, go I'm ahead. gonna I'm gonna call this James Gunn the Suicide Squad because yeah. uh, it seems like a, I mean based on what we saw uh, we we both saw the teaser trailer it seems like a redo man it's like a, it's like mm -hmm. a fresh start so uh, I'm 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 from what I saw I'm hype I want to see his take on it everybody knows James Gunn I mean for those who who doesn't know who Suicide Squad is. This group of villains, who's basically, um, you know, they know that the, the deal is you successfully complete the mission uh, and you get 10 years off of your sentence or whatever by Amanda Waller. And, and it's all of these characters from the Batman universe uh, and some other DC characters from, from other, uh, I mean, you can have Captain Boomerang, which has participated against The Flash a couple of times in comics. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, man. I don't know about, about, what you, about your impressions, Chris, but so far... I mean, James Gunn said, and, and, and quote, he said that basically this was the most fun, the most like the most uh, like uh, fun uh, movie that he's made so far, like the biggest movie that he ever made so far, based on all his movies. That's a big statement that he says that it, this is the biggest. Biggest can mean anything. What do you think he meant by that, man? So, I mean, I, ha I had a, a lot of things I wanted to say about the trailer itself. And this is going to maybe come out of so left field, um, but my, uh, my immediate thoughts whenever they were, because the bulk of the teaser is is, is is typing up James Gunn, and this is James Gunn's movie, and this is James Gunn's vision. Yeah. And um, so what I believe, uh, I mean, Will, you know, I don't, maybe if you're listening, you don't know, but um, for a long stint of time there, James Gunn, who directed Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, Yes. was fired from Marvel Studios to direct it because of some old old tweets and for whatever reason Disney decided to can him. Mm -hmm. So what happened was uh, he he got fired for some just, you know, tweets that would have been acceptable a decade ago, but Disney wasn't cool with it, whatever. Um, uh, the entire cast of Guardians of the Galaxy boycott being in the movie until James Gunn was rehired, plus the entire internet wanted him back. Um, and eventually he ended up, you know, after... I want to say maybe three, four months, you know, Marvel said, hey, James Gunn's going to have Guardians of the Galaxy again. So what I think, and this is maybe, I don't know if it's a conspiracy, but there's so <laughs> much direct footage of James Gunn being like, this is the best movie that I've made. And this is going to be the coolest, biggest movie, which I'm sure is true in his head. But I kind of feel like at the time that like those a bit were of, recorded. Like a, bit of, like a little bit of Vendetta or something like that. Maybe, man. I, I think that those clips, I think DC had those clips in a vault from okay. when he got fired from Marvel and he was already working on Suicide Squad and James Gunn was like, all right, well, I'm just going to give this my all. I'm not giving Marvel anything. So DC's going to have my everything, my full creative brain. Um, and I think DC, even after Marvel hired him back for Guardians of the Galaxy, was holding all these clips of James Gunn being like, this is James Gunn's best movie. And like they were waiting for him because... That's so much of the trailer. So much of the trailer isn't talking about Suicide Squad. They're talking about James Gunn. Yeah, yeah. That it, it's it's man. It doesn't that doesn't sound too crazy, bro? Like I hadn't I didn't see it as a. I mean, I 
didn't consider that as a possibility, but probably, I mean, he's good at what he does. Let's yeah. not take credit out of him. Like when it comes to uh, team up type of superhero movies, he knows his thing. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, he came out of nowhere with that and he mm -hmm. knocked it out of the park. And Gal Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was amazing as well. So, I mean, Warner Brother, as soon as he see, see, saw him as a free agent, it was a great move to just snatch him. Especially so, for that team-based kind of thing, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, so I don't see it's too crazy what you're you're implying. Basically, him trying to say, "Hey, man, you guys had me and you lost me, so I'm gonna make it, make your wife. This is gonna be amazing, and you're gonna be sorry you let me go." Um, I do, I do believe there's still the passion behind it, though, and like mm -hmm. the loyalty. First off, because James Gunn's an awesome person and a yeah. great and a great filmmaker, but. After he got hired to do Guardians 3, he said, okay, I'm going to come back, but now you have to wait for me to finish Suicide Squad because I've already told DC that I'm going to do it, and now you have to wait. So I think all the passion will be there, and then starting to talk about the movie itself, I do think it's going to be good. Um, I can't tell you, and I wasn't even expecting it at all, the fact that it's not called Suicide Squad 2, yeah. and it, it, they're just rebranding it or whatever, mm -hmm. which that is... Man, I'm flooded with happiness for DC. Like I, I mean, just they're making all the right. They're making right moves finally. Um, Make, they're making their right announcements. We have to wait for the movies, but announcements for sure. They got me excited. They got me there. I mean, even just leading up to this um, yeah. with 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 Joker um, and Birds of Prey was fun enough. You know, like I thought anyway. Uh, it, it DC's making good decisions. Um, and I think I think this will be a really exciting one. Uh, yeah, rebranding it is making good, it's making good decisions. DC. DC. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. They. So I was gonna I was gonna uh, ask you, man. You saw Birds of Prey. Yeah. I didn't saw that movie. Uh, honestly, uh, Suicide Squad was a little bit disappointing for me. The original one. Oh, it was and, a disaster. It, it was horrible. Yeah, it and it trash. and it just took me out. As a fan, I was like. I don't know. Uh, you're trying to push right now. Well, the only thing that kind of worked from that movie was was Margot Robbie, which is just amazing mm -hmm. as Harley Quinn. I mean, w w with what I have, I have seen so far, she's been working with what she's gotten, mm -hmm. but so far, I, I see her as Harley Quinn. Uh, yeah. And they're basically being took out that this movie out, which is Harley Quinn Emancipation. But then I saw the whole messy title thing changing. I saw them not not sure what they were trying to appeal. Uh, I I saw them trying to to basically sell this movie as a as a woman center movie with a woman director. I don't know. To me, that was a little bit of I don't know if 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 you're trying to to make it better or just basically trying to just get out a product. But you tell you told me you saw it and you did like that movie. Yeah, I I, I, I thought it was fun. So. Um... Kind of, I mean, I'd be in the same place as you. Uh, I don't think I've said it on the podcast before, um, but we, we've talked about it um, at least over text or something. Yeah. Um, I'm disappointed with with everything DC's done in the past ten years, except for the Nolan trilogy. Um, Batman vs Superman's Damn, pretty cool even, until even, the end. Even Man of Steel. Man of Steel's fine. Man of Steel is fine. Okay. But like, I don't want superheroes that I know and love to be like oh, acceptable. You know, like okay. I, I want it to be amazing. Um, so Man of Steel was okay. Um, what about Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman, forgettable. So forgettable. Um, just not a terrible movie, but just absolutely forgettable. I turned Aquaman off, dude. And like that, <laughs> that that's going to be... I know a lot of people that are, are watching or listening right now are already going to think I'm a DC hater, but I'm not, man. I'm not. I, I love all these characters. It's, it's, a, it's a, a disservice to my own fandom to have to turn Aquaman off. It's just... Justice League sucked. Batman vs Superman was kind of bad. What brought me into and I don't I don't want to trash the whole thing, but man, they were bad. The Snyderverse was bad. At least the way that they put it out, they rushed yeah. it too much. Whatever. So how I ended up kind of being somewhat excited to see Birds of Prey was um, several months prior was when Joker came out, mm -hmm. and Joker is the best movie that I've seen wow. in a while. Oh yeah, that's uh, I ha I mean I get I'm sort of put in a difficult position where for the past, you know, five years, um, not even superhero movies, but just movies in general, um, Joker and Endgame are fighting in, in, a, in, that, in a space of my head for that throne because they're both amazing in different ways. But 
um, I, I went and saw Joker twice because it's just, it was so good. Yeah. So when they said that uh, Harley Quinn and the Emancipation, uh, whatever it's called. <laughs> Nobody knows the title, man. I don't remember what it is. God. Um, so when they're like, okay, so Margot Robbie's producing it, uh, mm-hmm. which is just, you know, she's going to funnel her money into making it be cool. Yeah. Um, and then they said the director isn't Zack Snyder and they just, it, 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 because they said it was its own thing and not a part of all the Justice League garbage, I was like, all right, great. I'm going to give this a chance. Um, plus, I, I have a movie pass. So I, at, when we can see movies. <laughs> you got to use it. You got to use those for it for sure. free. Yeah. But I, I, I would have paid for it either way. So, so I went. I, they're, no, they're tr- I'm starting to mm-hmm. interrupt you, man. So they're trying to, they're trying to uh, basically course correct most of these things. That you're right. And the fact that there's a lot of fans like you, man, that are very disappointed. That they don't, don't hate these characters. Uh, like directly, it's just that they hate the the vision of, of how these characters are portrayed. So you're not alone on that. I mean, uh, we disagree sometimes because I did like Aquaman, you didn't. Uh, I, I didn't like uh, Harley Quinn, you did like Harley Quinn. So we're seeing that there's like a like a like a maybe like like possibilities. I hear glimpses of hope here and there. Uh, I did like Wonder Woman. You said Wonder Woman was forgettable. Like like it's we fine. I li- I did not like Wonder Woman. No no, I'm not saying you didn't like it. You're saying that it was it just didn't impact you. Which which uh, is normal. Yeah. Because yes. To me, mm-hmm. to me, uh, those Justice League didn't impact me, and yeah. Manny Manny did like that movie. You see what I'm saying? So we, we all come from from the mm-hmm. same background in a way, but we're thorn between women. That there's no like oh we like all these movies where we're trying to figure out what's going on, what the problem is. Uh, the same now, garden, but different 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 picking from different fruits. Correct. So. Yeah. You mentioned Joker, man, and I and I have a question for you right now. Sure. There was a quote that I took from that video that said, uh, there is this is gonna be like a big massive graphic novel brought to life. So my question to you is do you think that maybe, just maybe this is gonna be like a R rated movie? Um, I think it would be I think probably And again my more question like... comes from the fact that Joker wasn't R rated, so No, it, I don't think so. I, Joker was was really like had to be R. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, just talking movie ticket sales and everything else, it'll be like pushing PG thirteen to its limits okay. more than likely. That, um, that, that's a possibility. But do you think that maybe Warner Brothers is trying to dis- distance themselves from Marvel now that they know that R movies sell? You see what I'm saying? Like there's a there's a there's a consumer base craving for these. Well, like, R. I just. Uh, not to interrupt, sorry. I just, our movies and superhero movies are tricky. Like we talked about, you know, last week, The Boys is a very, it's a very specific thing. The Joker is a very specific R-rated villain. Uh, I Deadpool mean, too, Logan. So that's where I was, that's that's where I was headed was Deadpool. So mm-hmm. Deadpool and Joker, if you, if you isolate them to their own movies, it doesn't make sense for it to be PG-13 because they're both R-rated characters. Yeah. Now, if you put the, like if you were to put Deadpool or Joker in a in, in the same movie as as Wolverine or uh, um, Batman or, or or anybody else, I think you probably would bump it down to PG-13. Don't get me wrong; I would like for Suicide Squad to be rated R, maybe, um, but I don't think there's a need for it. I think that they can get away with PG-13 and have it be a good movie. Me too. Like I, I don't I don't want to impose this, but in a way. I want to see James Gunn surprise me. And there were, there were promising a lot of surprises in this. I believe maybe James Gunn over there at Marvel was a little bit uh, whole because you know, we know those movies already had a certain tone. Yeah. So he going over here while he was fired, completely gone from Disney, no mm-hmm. chances of coming back, and maybe get James Gunn to sit and, and tell him, hey, listen, we're going to let you do the movie that you want. And we're going to give you a little bit more freedom when it comes to, to that rating. Possibly James Gunn has way more chances to not only surpass whatever he did with guardians, but also surprises because we know where he comes from. We know he can perform and do excellent movies, but we never seen maybe a James Gunn a little bit more like, like close to that fine line of being R rated to PG, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, it, I think I think a lot of those characters are pushing it, um, and as long as they're not overdoing it with edginess for the sake of being edgy, correct? I think yeah, I, I think I think I think him having creative control would be great.